Hello, hi everybody, and thank you for joining me today for the latest webinar in our Twinkle Home Educators Conference. And today I have a little presentation for you about Twinkle Home Educators Big Initiatives. So I am going to bring up a little PowerPoint presentation to assist me today. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk you through some of the kind of collaborative learning projects that we offer, particularly paying attention to those things that we've tried to nail down in our calendar so that we can tell you all about them, you know when to expect them, and hopefully you can join in with us. Now, I've got to admit, I've had quite a lot of fun putting this one together because it's been a little bit of a trip down memory lane for me really and even putting all these kind of badges and logos on this first slide here has been a lovely reminder of some of the the things that we've had the the pleasure and the opportunity to work on and and bring you and some of the things that uh, that some of you have, have joined in with before now of course you may be a veteran of many of our previous projects and initiatives or you may be brand new to it and hopefully kind of finding this for the first time. So whichever of those groups you uh, you fall into, I thought I might start by just talking a little bit about what I mean by our big initiatives and why we have them. So right from the very beginning, when we first started segmenting out um, the, the home ed customers at Twinkle and trying to kind of help and inspire and, and bring you useful things specifically um, as part of that process something that I very much wanted to do was was build a community and I think it's something that for us as home educators is is a nice and important thing to be able to sometimes have that feeling of, of doing things in step with with other families kind of things that we can share and relate to and so on so for me an obvious part of you know creating that community feel was having events and happenings and projects which which everybody could could work on at the same time so that was kind of the mindset um, that you know led me and us here on the team to, to develop some of these initiatives just you know fostering that sense of community and working on things together so what we've tried to do with our initiatives is, is make them traditions. So, you know, you know what's coming because we all do lots and lots of different things all the time in our busy home ed lives. But it's nice to know sometimes that, you know, a little bit like the seasons, that uh, some things we can depend on, some things will, will come around naturally of their own accord. And then we can kind of, um, you know, pick up our journeys with those initiatives and projects. So as I go through some of the initiatives we offer, I will try and locate them on the calendar, although that proved a little bit more difficult than I had anticipated. I thought I might nicely go through the year, but uh, some of them crop up multiple times. So it's not quite that simple, but I can give you an idea of when you might expect certain projects and initiatives to pop up. And then the last thing to um, point out is really that we, we continue to, to work on big projects and offerings and community collaborative things because you seem to like them. And, and particularly with some of them, they get more and more popular each year. Um, the awareness increases and, yeah, they basically get bigger and better. And we absolutely love seeing people take part in the things that we offer, some of the fantastic creative inspirational shares that um, that we see throughout these these initiatives so i'm going to talk you through some of them this morning so we will start with our page of nature competition so some are a little more established than others page of nature was run for the very first time in october of 2022 the idea behind our Page of Nature competition was that it should celebrate the connection between home educators and nature. So it's uh, it's quite a simple concept. It's meant to be a, um, a national competition. We wanted to recognize each and every single entry. So we created personalized uh, certificates from our judging panel for, for every entry into the Page of Nature last year. 
we had over a hundred entries last year in October and we were able to give out some some quite nice prizes as well to our winners we've got our winners here displayed on this this slide so on the, on the left we've got um, a brilliant piece of work some lovely writing about octopuses or octopi whatever plural version you want to use, which was uh, really characterful and, and really personal about a learning experience of finding out about octopuses. And then in the middle, this bug hotel entry, a kind of mixed media printing, some cardboard art, just a beautiful piece of work. And on the right hand side, the squirrel photography entry, which um, you know, hopefully you can see has uh, squirrel photography, which would grace any photography or nature competition. So yeah, we want this to be a fixture on your calendar. We've, as I said, trying to make it as easy as possible to enter and take part in. It literally does what it says in the title. The, the, the title is your instructions for the competition. All you have to do, all your learners have to do is create one page of nature um, of any size and any format. So whether it's photography, fiction writing, whether it's infographics, whether it's art, whether it's um, poetry, anything goes. If it fits onto a page and it's about nature, then it is welcome and encouraged in our competition. So what we hoped is that the, uh, the competition would kind of perhaps consolidate and encourage nature learning that was already going on and then contain within it sort of decision making, evaluation, deciding how to best present a piece of learning. And the early signs are that this again will, will grow and grow and become a fixture on your calendar. So look out for this one uh, towards the end of this year. Okay, next thing I'm going to talk about is a, an initiative which is a little bit uh, more ingrained. So these are our virtual adventures that we offer in conjunction with Paw Print Family. So Paw Print Family do these gorgeous embroidered badges and also create a challenge pack on their website for each of the virtual adventures we offer. Um, and these are all of the ones that we've done so far. I'm not going to talk too much about this because we're going to have a little chat from uh, a little chat with Charlotte from Paw Print Family in a moment or two. But enough to say that the resource from our side is basically um, a, a story driven PowerPoint presentation which covers engaging topics and each contains a unique learning tracking system. So there's some way of measuring your progress through the adventure. Um, and then the embroidered badge we've talked about, the packs on our site are free and there are also always resources available to take the project deeper. And all of the ones that we've done previously are still available. But timing wise, we tend to aim for the beginning of what would be a school term. So this year, we've had a, a virtual adventure coming out in January, one just now, just recently, just last week in April. And then we have others planned for September and December. So it's a great way to start a new learning term, if you like. OK, so we will now have a chat with uh, Charlotte from Paw Print and then we'll carry on from there. It's Charlotte from Paw Print. Hi. Hello. Thank you for joining me, Charlotte. Very excited. Very excited. Apologies, though. I feel like I don't know where I'm looking when it comes to technology. I'm a bit like, where do I look? I'm looking at you. I'm looking at the camera. <laughs> Just look in lots of different places and you'll yeah. you'll get us occasionally, I guess. So thank you for joining us. We're going to talk a little bit about our partnership with Paw Print Family, your, your organisation today, which came about when our mutual customers basically told us that we needed to get together because they said, look, we're already using Paw Print badges with your Twinkle resources. You need to get this sorted out and do something officially. So... Yeah. For people that haven't come across Paw Print and your badges before, do you mind giving us a little bit of an intro into yeah. what you do and how it works? 
we were definitely nagged into it, Alistair, but I don't think it's been a bad thing <laughs> at all. The best way. Um, so yeah, so essentially what we do is it's like a scouting guiding model. We've come from a scouting guiding background, but we are passionate about adventure for all. So it's about every young person accessing what we do. Um, so essentially we create what we term as a challenge pack, which is just a list of activity ideas on any given theme. So if we just take the Wild West adventures, for example, um, there is a free to download challenge pack that anybody anywhere in the world can download and access. It's got a bit of a how-to guide in it with how many activities we suggest for different age groups and things. Um, and then the actual pack is divided up into craft, food, games, and other adventures. So we give you a broad range of ideas. You can pick and choose, you can use them as starting points, you can adapt them, tweak them. We always say, make it work for you rather than you working for it. Um, mm -hmm. And the idea is, is that it's just this great, easy adaptable system that anybody can get involved with but it comes with this massive sense of reward at the end in the form of a collectible badge mm -hmm. so we make embroidered badges we have done now for seven years we've just celebrated our seventh birthday and um, and we produce free resources that go alongside which are not a patch on the plethora of resources created by twinkle is that, but is that a patch, not a patch on our resources yes that's it we like yeah. to say the competition aren't a patch on us so yeah it's definitely pun intended um but yeah so i think that's why it works really nicely between us and and twinkle because we create all these activity ideas and resources and our customers were saying to us oh, will we use it alongside because i can find this really great timeline or resource or craft activity on twinkle that sits with this craft or with this suggestion and it's like a win-win situation for people so we give them the ideas you guys give them the resources mm -hmm jobs are good in completely yeah. bash bosh one percent of everything we do goes into a trust fund and we then support young people so further in that idea of adventure for all we give money back then so every year we provide grants and they're open to all young people and so when we first started it was just scouting and guiding but now it's all young people so anyone aged 11 to 25 can apply and it could be for a piece of equipment could be for support with services it could be to help them fund travel to a trip or a visit somewhere and um, and like i say that's that's available for every young person to apply yeah. that's wonderful beautifully um explained charlotte and people Not a very small nutshell unfortunately <laughs> People keep their collections in different ways, don't they? Like some of your your customers sew them onto camp blankets, don't they? Yeah, so we have blankets and we now do wall hangings as well, which are really cool. Um, and we also do badge bunting, which has been a new addition. So we have these strings of bunting, which were designed with like a home ed market really in mind because a lot of our home ed customers were getting in touch and saying, we love the idea of blanket, but we want to display them and show the world what we've done. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. now we've got these wall hangings and the bunting and people can kind of decorate their learning space with those items and then show off the badges that they've got as well. But then other people put them in lap books and yeah. you know, lap books and things. And yeah, it's yeah. nice to see. I put mine on the back of my jacket. Yes. So the moment. I'm all about a jacket. Yeah. jacket. Yeah. I've just bought a, uh, a hot pink jacket to start decorating with badges. So nice. I am fully in that camp now. Nice. So um, you did mention kind of uh, home educating customers. What? How significant? I'm you know, just curious. How significant a, a customer group are home educating families for poor print family? Okay. Well, I think it's fair to say, home ed was definitely an unintended market for us, um, but it's one that we absolutely are loving so much so that I'm like now seriously considering home educating our daughter because I'm like having been a teacher, okay. having been a teacher, I'm yeah. like. Ugh. Just, I just hate the school system with a passion, yeah. Um, yeah. which I think is why it kind of drives me to this. Um, but yeah, so essentially we've come from a scouting guiding background and scouting and guiding are still our primary customer base because mm -hmm. there's so many groups out there. Um, but way back when we started, we had a few home ed families get in touch and say, this is awesome. Like my son, daughter, child can't get involved with scouting or guiding in a traditional sense, but we'd love to still earn badges. Is that possible? And we were like, yeah, go to town like it's about everybody so anyone who wants to can get involved um and from like a couple of families it's sort of snowballed then into this awesome community that we've got 
on Facebook and out in the wider world, there's home ed groups getting together, doing their badges and sort of sharing their experiences and things. And I think lockdown definitely gave it a boost as scouting and guiding went on hiatus and um, everybody became a home educator in inverted yep. commas. Um, yep. And we haven't really ever seen that sort of decrease back to pre COVID levels. It's mm -hmm. sort of maintained as a, a real substantial group. So that I would say home ed probably represents our second largest customer. Okay. That's interesting. And really interesting to hear you thinking about home educating your, yeah. your daughter. I didn't know I just that. had some more hours in the day. This is my biggest thing. I'm like, how do people manage? I just, I couldn't work and do it at the same time, but yeah, secondary yeah. education. We've got lots of other webinars going on this week, Charlotte. Pop, pop along to a few of those and, and get. I will. I need to get some dates in my diary and then uh, <laughs> do some more investigating. But I'm like a little mine for information. I'm like, tell me more. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's really interesting because you probably get a little bit of uh, an. In I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, you 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 do have a Facebook group, don't you, for for your yeah. home educating members? So you probably get a little bit of uh, an insight into yeah, how. Loads. And it just looks so much more fun in school. <laughs> Yeah, and if there are if there are if there are ten different home educating families, they're probably doing home ed eleven different ways as well. So you kind yeah. of get an insight into that. Into that thing. My mum is like one hundred percent behind the idea. She's like, I want to do these kind of subjects, and I'd like to do these things. And yeah, yeah. And you're, widespread family as well, so we could cover different areas. I think it worked well. I should imagine your your badges do a really perform quite an interesting role for families that are child-led in terms of what they study because they can kind of scan your website and you know as your your range increases so the coverage of you know relatively niche topics and subjects increases too and just think yeah that's what I want to learn about next and therefore that's the badge I want to earn so it must Definitely. be quite interesting. And I think as home eds become a bigger group for us, we, we've started designing more and more to requests that we're getting. So people always say, do you accept requests for badges? I'm like, yes, absolutely. Come mm -hmm. to me, tell me what you want. Because the more people tell us what they want, the more requests we get for specific things, the yeah. more likely we are to produce a range. So for oh. example, our um, Facebook group at the moment is live with discussion around the Stone Age. People love the Stone Age, really want a Stone Age badge. We've obviously got a history timeline range yeah. that we've done, which sits really nicely alongside their Twinkle Home Ed history timeline. Let's just give that a flag. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we've got this range and we want to keep launching new ones all the time, but it's just yeah. a case of kind of scattering them. Yeah. drip feed but there is a stone age badge coming there's stone age iron age bronze age and um, yeah. we've also got celts and mayans i think this year so yeah oh i can picture the celt one with the, the blue kind of makeup um we've got uh a, a live lessons unit on the stone age running at the moment i wonder if there's a that's maybe where it's coming from then <laughs> so yeah so we we're going to talk a little bit about the the things we've worked on together yeah. and so what we've partnered on is our virtual adventure series which was a, a kind of resource type that again there's a parallel we developed during lockdown because obviously nobody could go anywhere so we developed this idea of um, taking people off around the world from from the comfort of their own homes via a, a power story driven powerpoint presentation and in the first um instances of of the the adventures are kind of physical sort of walking tracking sheet things that people could track their exercise into the virtual adventures and that's kind of changed and morphed a little bit over time but still the tracking sheet that measures the progress through the adventure is very much part of uh of what we offer and of course the the brilliant thing about having your your badges connected to these virtual adventures is as you said before people can decide you know what they want to achieve before they they give out the badge whether it's a combination of our adventure and your lovely challenge packs or whether it you know is is awarded at the culmination of the adventure so with the, our most recent one we have now partnered on five of these adventures and badges yeah. and they are all obviously still available via your shop uh, yeah, we're, we're, oh, are we going to yeah. go through them one by one? <laughs> i 
was going to ask you if you could remember them all, but you've... Yeah, you've... no, at the time of recording, annoyingly, I haven't got a sample of the latest one, um, but I have literally just this morning seen the picture of it, and I'm like, oh, can't wait to get it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. we began with the virtual, with virtual Amazon. Amazon, which was this yep. guy, and I think I've never really gotten over my love for this little green frog guy. Yeah. Just He's just ace. I think yeah, and the frog is central to the to the story, the um the virtual adventure pack as well. Yeah. And then we went to the Antarctic, didn't yeah. we? After that, yeah. yeah. Virtual... I think the colours of the Northern Lights did it for me with this one. There's something yeah. about every badge. I'm like, oh, that's my favourite that we've done so far. Oh, yes, favourite. And everyone yes. we do, I'm like, oh, no, I well, like. I well, I forget how generously sized they are as well. They really are like lovely kind of, yeah, palm size. There you go. And so from uh, virtual Antarctica, we went on a virtual Jurassic adventure. So that badge is in the shape of the county of Dorset because yeah. the virtual Jurassic Trail kind of followed the Jurassic coastline yeah. at the bottom of, of Dorset. With a really cool sand texture in this one. Yes. Yeah, that's a lovely one too. And waves in the sea. <laughs> a lovely um, detail. Yes, and then we went to a virtual Lunar New Year adventure, which is, that's got a special feature, that one, hasn't it? It what has, this one's got the glow-in-the-dark moon. So yes. whenever we get a glow-in-the-dark badge in the office, we have a little toilet moment, because uh, the toilet <laughs> is the only, only <laughs> place in the building that it is dark. So we all congregate in the toilet with the sample and we're like, hold it up to the light. And we're like, three, two, one, go, go, go. We all run into the toilet and we're like, ooh, look at it. So yeah, yeah. we did have, we had a toilet moment with that one. Fantastic. And so we just got the recently released um, virtual botanical as well, but we yeah. haven't um, got that one to show, but I think people are really going to, really going to like that one. It's, um, it's a good one. Yes. So uh, I wonder if people might be able to guess what they think is our uh, best seller from from those ones there, because we do have one that's that's proved more pop, even more popular than the others, don't we? So obviously lots of people kind of work them, you know, and, and kind of keeping their set complete and up to date. But we did have one that kind of, I guess, really got some fans and don't know what, what people might think that I feel like we need a drum roll like to... yeah just give people time to have a little bit of a think we can even invite a comment or two in the in the chat as we do this so go on then charlotte tell us which one the okay. most popular one has i don't know been. whether it's a combination of the little green frog or the timing but this one has been the all-time favorite it's yep. still sells through the through the year through the yeah every time we do a new partnership more people get on board with this one and yeah i don't know whether it's the the neon colors or the little green frog but everybody seems to love the amazon adventure there you go so yeah the amazon and of course the great thing about it, i mean it's you know you can you can go from one to the other if you haven't done any of them yet they all just sit there they're all available they're fantastic off the um, off the shelf uh, projects, basically that are ready to go for you. So, and that's the yeah. nice thing about these partnerships as well is you know you can you don't necessarily need to worry about getting on board with them at the launch point. You know, it's great if you can take part and you're working as part of a wider community and everybody's kind of working on it together. But yeah. for people who do discover them later on, like we had a question from a, I think it was from a scouter actually, and they were like, oh, we want something fossil themed. And we were like, oh, well, we've got a virtual Jurassic adventure. And that's the thing as well. It's it's broader than just home ed and people mm. can get involved from sort of externally and yeah. get involved with the challenges as well, which I think is really nice. Yeah, it's really lovely. I, I see that as mirroring a little bit sometimes what I think we do at, um, at Twinkle as well, because we're able to explore off curriculum. Sometimes we create some resources at Twinkle that would never exist on Twinkle if it wasn't for home educators. But of course, you know, have high engagement appeal and are about fascinating subjects that other people find and enjoy so that's that's quite nice to hear you, hear you say that and of course we just talked about the virtual amazon as the bestseller but we don't know what the new one's gonna do it's we a good don't. one i'm excited 
Yeah. And uh, we were just going to uh, share what we've got coming up for, for the rest of the year to finish. So we have uh, two more virtual adventures in partnership with Paw Print planned this year. Yeah. So the next will be the virtual Australian adventure, uh, yeah. which will be coming your way in September. We'll be heading down under to uh, to take you there. And then one that we're really excited about, which Not will be... <laughs> which will be towards <laughs> the end of the year is our virtual Lapland adventure. So yeah, something that has become a popular kind of physical trip around that time of year, but of course it's exorbitantly expensive. So we're going to give you all of the uh, all of the advantages of a virtual Lapland adventure from I literally can't wait. There's nothing I love <laughs> more than snow and reindeer and Christmas and all of that. I'm just like, yeah, yes, I'm so yeah, 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 so yeah. ready for that. Yeah, great stuff. Is there anything else big coming our way from Poor Print this year, Charlotte? <laughs> um, well, yeah, the biggest thing for us is that we've got a new baby on the way. Um, <laughs> Congratulations. That's, that's going to be um, the next biggest um, adventure for us is that our family, is our home Poor Print family, is expanding by another member um, come late August. Um, obviously, you know, due dates pending. No one really knows. And we shall see but yeah that's the biggest kind of exciting thing for us personally but then from a work perspective and kind of for you guys um we obviously i don't know if you guys have seen but we've launched a new wholesale range of badges which has brought mm -hmm. together a whole load of new brands <coughs> so we kind of started off with a few brands last year with the gruffalo challenge um and we did a room on the broom challenge as well and this year we've we launched a wholesale range so we've now got Crikey, we've got Care Bears, Smurfs, Percy the Park Keeper, Elmer, um, all the Aardman things. We've got Wallace and Gromit, Sean the Sheep. Um, so all those badges are kind of filtering onto the website as we go along and we get stock in. But also there are, I'm excited to say, there are challenge badges coming for a lot of those brands as well. So um, by the time that this is launched, we'll have launched the Elmer Challenge, which is really exciting. Because um, I think he's such a great character in terms of inclusivity and diversity. Um, so I'm really excited to launch that one with a host of resources. Um, mm -hmm. And then we've got an exciting partnership coming up with Sean the Sheep as well. But I can't tell you too much more about that. But it's launching on the best day of the year, other than Christmas Day, um, which is the 29th of May, which is also my birthday. So, yeah, so that's a great launch day. Um, but yeah, so we've kind of got lots and lots of projects bubbling along um, in yeah. the background. And then there's some that I can't talk to you about yet either, okay. um, which are, yeah, Intriguing. on the horizon. Intriguing. So it's all going on, Charlotte. Well, thank you so much for uh, joining me um, to explain all of that. Best of luck with, uh, congratulations, best of luck with baby number two. And we shall look forward to those, uh, those future. Thank you. Have a great rest of the conference. Okay. Wow. So always lovely to talk to Charlotte from Paw Print. And there was, uh, yeah, some some updates from, from Charlotte there, which was uh, which was interesting and great to get those firsthand. Uh, we'll pop back to our presentation. Um, so just one thing to, uh, extra thing to note about the virtual adventures with Paw Print is that when we launch a new one, you will find lots of opportunities to kind of share and get involved more often than not live lessons that accompany the launch as well on our social media channels so all in all just creates a lovely project that you can join in with right let's move on to our cooking initiatives so this is another thing that we have invested a lot of time and energy into because I guess we're big believers in, in the benefits of uh, cooking and baking for learners in the amount of skills and experiences and life lessons and useful things that young people can get out of taking on cooking and baking projects. And we also tend to see that anything around cooking and baking is really, really popular with home educating families. So what we do is we offer two cooking challenges, uh, cooking and baking challenges 
Uh, we have our Home Ed Bake Off Challenge, which runs in September, which is now into its uh, third year, I think. And we've got our Plate Up Challenge, which runs in March. They're both different. I'm not the best person to explain how they're different. The best person to explain how they're different is Chrissy from the Home Ed team who takes responsibility for these challenges. So I'm going to get her on. We're going to have a little chat to her about them. Chrissy, hi, and thank you for joining us on this Twinkle Home Ed Big Initiatives webinar. Now, I was very keen to bring you on because you are the Paul Hollywood of the, uh, the Twinkle Home Ed team. There's no denying it because you are the creator, driving force and judge of our two food related competitions that have become a fixture on our Twinkle Home Ed calendar. So this is a great opportunity for you to just explain to everybody about what we do, how it works, how people enter and when they can look out for these competitions. Hi, well, thank you for joining, for coming along, inviting me along. And uh, Paul Hollywood is a very big... Oh, it's true, big it's true. Yeah. For two initiatives, we won uh, the Bake Off Challenge in the autumn, um, usually around the same time as the TV show goes out. And then in the spring, we're currently running it now uh, at the end of March and the beginning of April, we run our Plate Up initiative. They're slightly different, so I'll talk first of all about Bake Off. So Bake Off is exactly as it says on the tin. It's about uh, baking a variety of cakes or breads, uh, pastries. It works very similar way to uh, the show. And then we had feedback about how people really, really enjoyed it, but that it wasn't that great for the waistline. So we decided to have a second initiative where we, um, which is our plate up initiative, where we go through um, more meals. Um, and so sort of main meals, starters, accompanying salads, um, and various things uh, that you can cook that potentially are a little bit better for the waistline. And so we create a pack for each of these with our recipes that people can use as a starting point. And it's very much a really key point that it's a starting point. So we try really, really hard on the Homer team to make them uh, variable for all dietary requirements and also all kind of taste requirements because some uh, young people have aversions to certain textures and certain tastes. So we try and make it uh, as inclusive as possible, which is something that I'm really proud of. Um, and yeah, and so you can join in for one week or every week and you cook the item. So it might be for Bake Off, it might be Cake Week. Um, and for Plate Up, it might be, so this time we have, for example, Pasta Bake Week and you cook your thing and then you put, share a photograph of it over on our Twinkle Home Ed Facebook page uh, in our group. And then I go along and judge them. Um, and uh, it's quite hard because sometimes I wish that I could have a weekly delivery of all of these items. Well, I was going to ask about that. Yeah, um, it must be quite so, frustrating, isn't it? To, to, it is know. if you see, less so with cake, because I can kind of work out what it would taste like in terms of mm -hmm. what ingredients they, you know, the young person used. But with plate yeah. up, I think in some ways that and allows even more invent inventions for young people to make more herbs and spices kind of combinations more ingredient combinations and so yeah there are certain things that go up and I'm like oh I'd really like to try that mm. um, and so yeah then we judge them and then each week we declare five winners and then those five winners get a prize so that's it in a nutshell yeah, and we've had some quite nice prizes in the past, haven't we? We've, well, we've got, is it badges normally, isn't it? For so the, for the up is usually badges because we thought it'd be nice to sort of have a collection over the time for however long we run it, however long people uh, kind of engage and want it for. Um, and yeah, with um, with Bake Off, uh, we've had a wooden spoon and some cookie cutters um, as the last sets of prizes from the last two years. So yeah, some nice prizes. So every, we've done two years of each competition, so heading into the third year for each this year. Yes. And 
is yeah it's pretty hardwired now isn't it and what's what's lovely is we have more and more entries each year don't we and it, it seems like the word gets around about the uh about the competitions and of course you know cooking and and baking is such a rich learning experience as well isn't it which is part of the reason why we we offer these and and promote them yeah so that's kind of one of the things i really wanted to kind of talk about really is the whole reason behind it particularly with plate up is i think that you know when you're home educated you have that real freedom to actually learn real life skills um and to you know and i also think you know that to put we've got children cooking three course meals with accompanying salads and desserts and i do think and people can correct me if i'm wrong but you don't tend to even do that at school even at gcse i mean i remember when i was doing gcse i just made the same salad over and over again and kept evaluating yeah. it and then you, I wouldn't made, have, you wouldn't have the time would you in it yeah and i made the same celebration cake over and over again and that was like my home economics and so i think you know we have children who are learning skills of chopping and learning skills of you know how to separate eggs and learning skills about how to cook safely how to use knives safely um how to uh, use different ingredients looking at flavors and learning from you know we have children that participate on their level at kind of three four um, and they cook along with their grown-ups and then we have children that are kind of 15 16 who have cooked uh, a starter a main course a dessert an accompanying dish uh, all using this pack as a springboard for 15 people and, and yeah. help their grown up sort of host a dinner party. And you've got that, you know, all that differentiation, all yeah. those amazing skills that people are learning. And also when you get to sort of my old age and you get children that require you to make, we have this cake book um, and um, my children look through it and demand this mm. random cake in it that looks really easy and it never is. And so... You know, I sort of think, well, if I'd had opportunities like this when I was a young person, maybe my birthday cakes that I make my children wouldn't look so appalling as they do. Oh, I'm sure they're they're not as bad as all that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, what 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 you're talking about is is what I think I love about these initiatives because it's such a win win because the the learners are occupied. You know, they're learning skills that are useful now and also in the future. And then the family gets a tea or a you know a, a baked treat cooked for them as well. I suppose yeah. the only downside is the the mess that might get left in the kitchen. But uh, oh, I, do, I did do a video on your request about how to do the washing up, so that is over on our YouTube channel. So yeah, so I have looked at, at that in terms. So that of is all part of the washing up, and I think that's a good point in terms of you know also you know there's we do evaluation sheets as well as part of the pack so if you really want to develop those skills and your children or young people are interested in taking on you know cooking into the future and sort of external qualifications that ability to design and then make and then evaluate is a really key skill and again you can even on the level of learning you can do it at, at various different levels too yeah um, and so i think that's another thing that that yeah. is what quite special and it has to be said that we absolutely love these competitions here on the home ed team just looking through the entries we are regularly just blown away by the efforts and the lengths that our young home educators learners go to and you know like you say the the, the big difference in the age range and, and the approaches and the creativity always comes through as well doesn't it people have their own ideas i think it also build that community that online community for people because people i love also when other families comment on other families bakes and dishes and say that looks really good and well done for such and such and and i think you know that also is something that helps build that that community yeah that's a great point to end i think it's a it's a lovely sort of feel good thing that you can bank on being back later in the year so we'll look forward to the the next one chrissy and hope for lots more entries on that and some new families joining in thank you so much for joining me i shall thank let you. you go and we'll carry on a great overview then of our baking and cooking initiatives from chrissy and i think one of the things that's worth noting about these is because they're biannual, the next one is never far away and they tend to come around 
so quickly certainly on the team we're like well it's bake off again already and it, and it kind of almost catches us out so if you haven't joined in one yet do look out for the next one and uh please take part and get involved okay so just uh wrapping up with a few of our other kind of regular events on the calendar another one to point out is the poetry by heart competition so this is a natural uh, a national uh, competition for which you need to learn and recite a poem or more than one poem and over the last three years now the Twinkle Home Ed team has been able to facilitate entries into this competition, which was previously the exclusive reserve of, of schools. Um, we have been able to facilitate entry for, for home ed learners, which has been fantastic. And again, it's one of the things that, you know, is going to come around year on year. Uh, and you can get used to the timings of and get prepared and choose your poems plenty in it of time in advance of the closing date for the competition, which is normally at the end of March. What we have found from people that have taken part in the Poetry by Heart competition is that learners really find it um, a very rich learning experience, really uh, a confidence building thing um, it's very sort of tickable and achievable that idea of first of all choosing a poem you know finding something that resonates with you learning it which is you know committing something to memory is a is, is, is an interesting skill in and of its own right and then concentrating on the performance aspects to do your best job of you know basically kind of letting the poet speak through you and, and providing entertainment with your recital and your version of the poem. So again, it's, uh, it's something that we love going through the entries thought for. It's something that you can look out for on our uh, social media channels when the time comes around and we will help you and guide you on, on the entry process and everything else you need to know. So we're getting uh, towards the end of the initiatives that I'm going to talk to you about today. But I did just want to mention our summer challenges as well, because we're very much aware that, um, you know, things can change a little bit over summer. We are used to, as home educators, places being relatively quiet during the week, during the day, whether it's parks or, you know, attractions, museums, galleries and so on. But of course, over the six weeks of summer, all that changes significantly and places do get very busy. So we have found that there is certainly an appetite and, you know, every family is different. We know that some some families ignore school holidays, but we certainly can see from our downloads and activity on the Twinkle website that there are you know, a good number of families that do kind of continue in sync with, with school holidays for whatever reason. And so we have found that there's a there's an interest in just a focus, I guess, over the over the summer. So previously in 2021, we came up with um, a reading challenge, which was you know just to, designed to to tick through the summer months. And then last year we put together our Park Life Challenge, Park Life Initiative, which was all about uh, basically taking learning outside um, in a whole variety of different subjects and ways. And we have got uh, some plans for this summer, which I think I can probably let you in on, seeing as this is uh, this is a conference and this is the sort of place where you might expect a revelation or two. So we are working on two things and hopefully we'll have the time and the team time to bring them both to fruition. But we're looking at some kind of uh, nature, uh, nature challenge linked to our very popular Pathfinders live lesson series. And we're also looking uh, at bringing you some kind of detectives academy uh, to really develop those investigative skills 
that might have come through some work with our CSI investigations. So just a little bit of a heads up. I, I can't 100% promise either of, either of those things at this time, but that is what we're working on. But either way, we'll be bringing you something as a focus through those summer months. And then once the summer is over, we have again another sort of uh, event that's cemented into our calendar, which is our not back to school week. So just join us on social media or via our newsletter during that, uh, that week when everybody else heads back to school because we have um, done our best to turn it into a celebration of everything home ed. So we will be encouraging photo shares on our social media. We will be bringing you giveaways. We'll be bringing you brand new resources created for Not Back to School Week. And there will be a whole program of events around that. So it's a great time to, to come join us on, on social media. So other than that, um, I have basically just set out to give you a little bit of extra information on our big headline community projects, I guess. But the great thing about Twinkle Home Ed is that there is always something going on, whether it's something that we're bringing you directly or whether it's um, members sharing what they've been up to themselves on our social media channels and also through our weekly newsletter, we do bring you something you know, pretty much all the time. So other things to look out for that we've run before are our 20 hours outside events, which I haven't covered today because they're not as um, set in stone in terms of when we run those, but little initiatives encouraging families to get outside and spend 20 hours outside in a single week. We obviously look to do things, bring you things around significant events and milestones and anything else that might be happening in the world. Our live lessons program is slightly different and that's being covered in another webinar, but just uh, a good opportunity to mention those. And on social media, you'll also find regular roundups of resources and blogs um, linked to our send and um, inclusion days. So there's always lots going on, but for now, we are going to end there. So I'm going to thank you very much for uh, joining me for this webinar. Uh, and I hope that we will see you on one of our big initiatives soon. Thanks a lot and bye.